brethren. Grace, and, grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My mother was pregnant when she married my father. She left him when I was around two years old. Prior to her departure, he had purchased a piece of land with a not so very nice home on it and put it in my name. This would be important later in my life. God sets the bounds of our habitations. We lived in Chicago for a brief period where she became pregnant but did not marry this man. He doesn't know that he has a son. Instead, she moved back to Michigan where her oldest brother lived. After the birth of my brother Kevin, she met a man named Jimmy who would live with us for the next nine years. She had only one child with him, my youngest brother, Scott. Jimmy was an alcoholic, and on the occasion that he did work, he would spend the money on alcohol. We survived on welfare. He was also abusive. It wasn't long until my teacher called in welfare because of the bruises and the welts that were left behind from the physical abuse. Welfare didn't take us from the home, but I believe they did serve my mother a summons to appear in court. My teacher, though she had seen the evidence of the physical abuse, did not know that there was also sexual abuse. My mother was not aware of this abuse either. He told me if I ever told my mother, he would kill me and her. My mother didn't appear in court. Instead, we began to move around, first to another town, then to another state. This went on for the next eight years. I rarely spent more than one year in any school. And at different times in some of these places, some well-meaning individual would stop and ask, do your kids want to go to VBS? And they'd arrange for someone to pick us up if we wanted to go, and I usually did. VBS was usually games and learning the Ten Commandments. I never heard the gospel at these places, which was such a tragedy because now not only was I abused because I knew thou shalt not commit adultery, I believed I was not acceptable to God. I wanted to be married someday and have a family. In my heart, I truly believed that as soon as I would marry, I would be cut off from God forever. The summer before my 15th birthday, with much pouting, sorry, my 16th birthday, with much pouting and whining, I convinced my mother to send, my, send me to my aunt and uncle's for the summer. We lived in Kentucky, and they lived in Fort Wayne, Indiana. At first, she said she couldn't afford it. Remember that piece of land way back at the beginning of the story? Well, she had sold it to her nephew when I was nine years old. Part of the legality of selling the land was that she had to put some money in the bank for me. So I reminded her of my money. <laughs> she withdrew enough for two bus tickets and put me and my youngest brother, Scott, on a Greyhound to Fort Wayne. At the end of the summer, when my cousin and I were talking about going back, I told her I won't go back. I said I'd rather run off with a truck driver, driver at, a, at a rest area than go back to that home. She told her mother. My aunt, through some questioning, found out that I had been raped by Jimmy at 13 years old. She called a family meeting of my mother's siblings and decided they would not send me back. One of my mother's brothers called her and told her, and told her that if she wanted to come to Fort Wayne, he and one of her other brothers would go and pick her and my other brother up, and they could stay. we could stay with her, one of the family until she got on her feet and got a place to live, which she did. My mother and I didn't get along. Two weeks after my 17th birthday, I would run away with a friend of mine to Houston, Texas. My brother Kevin had heard us talking about it and told Mom, and she, of course, forbid me, but I said, you have to go to work or you'll get fired. I'll simply leave while you're at work. I can either call you when I get there or you won't hear from me. She told me to call her when I got there. I spend a lot of time apologizing to my mother now. <laughs> I would spend six months in Texas. I would only contact my mother three or four times in that six months. I was so deceived by Satan that I honestly thought my mother hated me. When I came back home, I knocked on the front door, and my mother opened the door and said, you've lost weight, I'll fix you something to eat. And to this day, she's never brought it up again. At 19 years old, I read the Bible from cover to cover, though I didn't understand most of it. I was an avid reader, and since my mother worked days and I suffered from insomnia, I would read at night so that I would not disturb her sleep. I thought the Bible was thick enough that it would keep me busy for a while. It did. <laughs> I still didn't understand it, though. I got married, got divorced. Now I figured God really had no use for me. I would live with someone else for about five years, and when I did left, I decided I wanted to be alone for at least a year. I leased an apartment just to make sure I stayed alone for a year. And I purchased a mobile home and was living in it when Brother Mike and I met. Mike and I started living together shortly after, and we were married October 4th, 1997. We would be baptized into the Lord Jesus on September 13th, 1998. You can listen to Mike's testimony from two years ago to learn a little more about that whole process. 
Mike and I started attending a fellowship where both his brothers went. The gospel was not preached by the minister there, but I heard it rather through his brother Sean and his wife Amy. I can remember how my heart and spirit were lifted within me when I realized for the first time in my life that God had made a way for his banished not to be expelled from him. 1 Samuel 2, 8, 2, 8 through 10 says, He raiseth up the poor out of the dust. He lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Joel 2, 25 through 27 says, And I will restore to you the, le the years the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And, Lord, and, and I have to tell you the Lord has restored the years the locust has eaten. Ezekiel 36, 24 through 28 says, For I will take you from among, among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols, I will cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Jeremiah 32, 37 through 41. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries whither I have driven them in my anger and in my fury and in great wrath. And I will bring them again unto this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever, for the good of them and of their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good. But I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. Yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good. And I will plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart and with my whole soul. God has planted us with his whole heart and with his whole soul. Amen. Romans 3, 23 through 26 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. 1 John 4, 9 through 19 says, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son in the world, that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and him he in us, because he hath given us of his Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed that the love, the love that God hath to us, God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. I have not seen or heard from Jimmy since I was 15 years old. My youngest brother Scott had not seen or contacted his dad for about 12 years. He went to see him this year after learning that his dad was dying. Jimmy died in May of this year. I found out through conversation with my brother, who meant to text but accidentally called my cell, that his dad had come to the Lord almost two years prior to his death. I rejoice that the man that had caused such pain would not spend eternity apart from God. This is the true testimony of what God did in my life, a heart that can forgive as he has forgiven me, that can love because he loved me. Thank you. God bless you all.